Hi everyone, Boyana here from WorkPulse and welcome to another episode of WorkPulse Productivity Talks. Today with me I have Chris Kayser. He is the CEO and founder at Clickatree and Badentree. Uh, we will be talking a little bit about productivity, of course, as we always do. Uh, so, Chris, let's start off first by, tell us first uh, what it is that you do. What does your company do? Hi, Boyana, and hey, everyone listening. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Uh, with Clickatree, our mission is to make sustainability as simple as possible. So, we currently offer the planting of trees via the internet. So, with a few clicks of your mouse, you plant trees. And we're constantly working with new companies to embed planting of trees into everyday habits. So we're now working, for example, with a sushi restaurant. And every time you go and eat sushi, they plant a tree. We're working with email providers. And every time you write emails, there's trees being planted. You know? So that's the kind of direction we want to move in. And Badam Tree is connected to services such as booking, where people actually book something for their travels, right? Yes, correct. Um, Bad and Tree is uh, our tourism brand, as you can probably tell from the name. Uh, we work with uh, Booking.com, Expedia, Skyscanner, TripAdvisor, basically all the big brands in, in the tourism industry. Every time someone goes travel and they start the booking on our website, we receive a marketing remuneration for referring that client and then we invest that money into planting trees costs you exactly the same. There's no extra charge for the user because it's as I said from the marketing budget. If we wouldn't take the money, then booking.com would put it into TV ads or Google AdWords or something like that. I personally think it's best invested if we plant trees with it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. How did you actually get an idea to start doing some that, something like that? <laughs> it's uh, slightly unusual because I had the, the big pleasure to work in very close contact with elephants in Thailand for five years. Oh. And the biggest problems the patchyderms are facing there is deforestation, unfortunately, because due to infrastructure, agriculture, and now climate change, we're losing millions of trees every day. And hence I decided, look, it can't be that difficult to reforest our planet. Planting trees is a trade as old as humanity and we just need to generate income and because i've been working in tourism for over 10 years i know that there's a lot of money going around i thought we can take some money from there plus of course tourism doesn't necessarily have the most sustainable reputation at the moment mm -hmm. and a lot of people are looking for ways to make their travels a little bit more eco-friendly so that's how we got started with bntree and because a lot of other companies approached us like say the sushi restaurant or it consultants or now beauty uh, companies as well we opened Clickatree because it's a more versatile brand. Bad and Tree is quite limited to tourism, and Clickatree can be anything you can think of. That's a that's a very good initiative. I think it's it's something we we all definitely need. We'll all have use for them. Is having more trees. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for for introducing yourself. And what do you do? And now uh, I'd like to get some of your insights on productivity and start from the basics. Like, what would you say that productivity is? Um, productivity, in my opinion, is to use your time as efficiently as possible because time is the one single thing we all share equally. We all only have one life. Um, some might live a few years longer, others live a few years shorter, but you can't buy time no matter how rich you are, no matter how poor you are, you don't necessarily have less time. So it's the one thing that, that's equal for every human. And the better you use that time, the more you can achieve with your life, whether that is going more on holidays, making more money, having more impact on the planet, spending more time with friends and family, whatever it is that you find useful, the more efficient or productive you are, the more you can achieve of it. Okay, and uh, in terms of a business and running a business, do you think uh, that productivity can be measured and how uh, can it be measured in your opinion? It can definitely be measured, yes. You can set certain KPIs, um, like, like set targets, and you can say, how many words does this person write per hour, for example? And it can be a, a productivity tracker. Um, what I find very useful is to track productivity in terms of results. So instead of saying, you're the social media marketer, you need to create 10 social media posts every week, I think it makes a lot more sense to say, 
you need to increase our social media following by 10% or you need to increase the click-through rate to our website by 5% or whatever it is that actually matters to your business. So you make a difference between being productive and actually achieving something compared to just being busy and then spending your time in front of a screen. So um, I think that's a very important difference to make. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you shared, you shared some five tips initially uh, in the first email. Can you tell us, can you talk a little bit about them? <laughs> sure. More than happy. Um, the one initial tip to make your day more productive starts the day before. It always helps to pre-plan your day. So if you would look into my office, you see there's a massive whiteboard there on the wall. And it, I note down everything that needs doing. Every evening before I knock off, I have to pass that whiteboard. And then I make a priority list of what I will do tomorrow. First thing in the morning, second thing, third thing, and so on. And that way, A, I get out of bed a lot quicker because I know I have something to do and I know there's meaning to my day and I don't um, get tempted to snooze for another hour or something. And B, in the morning, I don't waste my most valuable hours, the hours where I have most energy on making decisions or what should I do today? Should I do this or should I do that or whatever? But um, I already have a plan in mind. And thirdly, planning ahead also helps your brain to get into the right mood because overnight, maybe your brain starts thinking, oh, okay, tomorrow I have to write this important pitch. What could be a good reason why this customer should buy from us or something like that? And you already have most of the answers in your head just by pre-planning your day. It takes 10 minutes every evening. Um, then you start the morning, of course, fully energized and uh, keen to make the world a better place. And... I find it very helpful to start with a morning mantra. Um, other people might call it a self pep talk. Whenever you shower or you get dressed or whatever it is, just tell yourself how awesome you are, and how good you look. Um, be grateful for the fact that you're healthy, especially during the current times. And then mentally stimulate yourself to, to be the most productive self you can be. And for that, it also helps to visualize your goals. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why does today matter? And what kind of long-term plans do you have? And that way, you know why you're doing what you're doing. Instead of just sitting in front of a computer, doing it because your boss tells you so, or because you think you have to sit in front of the computer, because every entrepreneur does. So um, that, that surely helps. Uh, um, also, to make the most of my morning hours, I uh, put all distractions aside. My phone is on flight mode until, at least until 10 a.m., I don't start a mobile internet before midday because I don't think that a WhatsApp message or something can be as important. Calls are important, but text messages never are because if they were, well, they can be important, but they're not urgent, put it that way. Um, if they were, then it would be a call. And when I switch on my phone at 10 o'clock, I get a notification of all the calls I missed and then I can call these people back and sort out whatever needs sorting out. And then text messages can be dealt with in the afternoon or the evening when you're not as energized or productive anymore anyway. Um, then the structure is, of course, super important. Uh, it ties in with the planning ahead. It depends on how you want to start your day. I found it super distracting to start with emails because emails are basically other people's problems who they rely on you. It is better to have a clear plan on, on doing something what pushes your business the most, like preparing an important pitch, for example, or to research some prospects that you can reach out to, things like that. Whatever it is that your business needs the most should be done in the beginning, A, because you have more energy, but B, also because it already gives you a sense of accomplishment, which energizes you throughout the day. And by 10 a.m., you feel like, oh, yes, I mastered these two big tasks already. Woo, I could basically knock off and already had a successful day. And every hour you work after that feels like an extra hour sort of thing. And you feel like a superstar or superhero in the end. And then last but not least, I highly recommend you knock off on time. Set yourself a limit. Um, shut down your computer by 6 p.m. or something. There is more to life than work. Uh, whoever dies has never regretted to spend more hours in the office. 
and also you do need time to, to calm down, to relax, to enjoy what you're creating, to spend time with family, to read a good book, to go for a walk, to do sports, whatever it is that makes you happy, but make sure you do a lot of it. Because as mentioned initially, we only have one life and it's up to you how you use it, how to make the most of that time. And it doesn't hurt to have a bit of fun every now and then. I think I, I, I like all the things but like with the last one, the thing right now, I think a lot of people right now are having that problem because we are currently, most of us are currently quarantined. We are working from home. A lot of people are working from home for, for the first time. And it, it, it can be tough to just set yourself apart from that computer and finish working. And this is like, I'm done for the day or like once the kids are in bed or when the dinner is over or whatever, you can easily find yourself opening up your laptop again to, <laughs> else to see yes. what happens because it just seems to be there. It's like much easier to get like uh, to turn the switch off when you leave the office. But when your office is at your house, it's <laughs> much easier to get back to it. So I think it's really important that overall, but especially now, it's really important for people to know when to like, enough it's just like it's not yes. it doesn't make any sense pursuing this because it's been already eight ten twelve hours whatever it is you're, <laughs> you're not gonna do anything good after 14 hours of work like there's exactly. no way so so yeah i think that's a, that's a good thing but like the tips you shared are uh are good tips that are mostly towards individuals like if you would like to uh, get this approach to your employees or coworkers or just your team. How would, how can a, a manager go about that and get uh, their employees to start applying some of these tips? What do you think are the most important things managers can do in those cases? Uh, my favorite approach, that's the one I got taught by my mentors and former bosses and that I'm applying in the company now is to live the example, to show people that what you're preaching actually works and that it makes you a ton more productive. And I don't think there are many people who don't like productivity, especially because that if, if you have the results driven, driven approach, if you tell someone, look, you need to, whatever, um, increase your social media following by 10%. If an employee needs five hours to do that, but you show this person a way to do it in three hours and tell the person, okay, then you achieved your goal. That's it. Um, go knock off, spend the evening with your family. I don't think anybody would find that a bad idea. So um, I think teaching other people productivity is something a lot of them like, unless of course you force them to then to just sit 40 hours in front of your computer, for example. I don't think that makes sense and it doesn't motivate employees to be productive because I can sit in front of my computer for 40 hours and get close to nothing done, no problem. I can also sit in front of the computer for three hours and get close to everything done and then feel good about myself and give myself an extra rest. That yeah, makes sense, it, it, it seems like a more flexible approach generally to the workplace and to the working hours is something that motivates people a lot. Like we've, we've seen the tests people have been doing with shorter work weeks, shorter work days and all of that. And somehow almost all of them uh, resulted in increased productivity in better results. And even though people were working short, shorter hours, because I mean, you yes. probably know that for yourself at some point, you're just going to, you're going to have a blockage. You, you won't be able to do any work, but still you need to be there until five or six o'clock. So you're just going to sit there in front of your computer until five or six o'clock, even though you're not going to do anything useful during those hours, but that's yes. the working hours. That's the working time. So that's how it's going to be. <laughs> uh, I think it's this, this, what's happening right now, I think it's going to help us all shift towards more flexible workspaces everywhere. Like even if, if people go back to the office and start working from the office again, I think employers will have a lot more understanding of the things that can and cannot be done during the work day and how long does it take to do something and how can a flexible work environment be created in a better way. Yes, fully agree. It's a shame okay. that it took such a crisis to make that shift, but if we can get something good out of it, you know, then that's better than nothing. 
Of course, of course. And another thing I wanted to ask you is like, what do you think is, okay, you said obviously lead by example and more flexibility is there, but what's the first step a manager should take when they decide, okay, I want to help my employees increase productivity. I want better productivity, better efficiency. We need to do better. What's the first thing they should do? Um, communicate, I guess. Talk with your staff. A, that you want to do it, and B, explain to them why you want to do it. And be open, be honest, tell them that it's good for the company because productive employees are good for the company because in the end they have a higher return on investment than non so productive employees. But on the other hand, also showcase them how it benefits them. Tell them that if you can hit certain targets, maybe they can get a day off extra per week or something like that. Or you can give them a bonus payment or they can get a, a certain percentage of the extra income you generate or whatever it might be. Give them some incentives to be productive. Ideally, employees should be incentivized to work for you anyway because you offer them a job and in a perfect world, you're a cool boss and you have a great company to work for and a great work ethics. But um, in a not perfect world, there might be some employees who just need incentives, which is perfectly understandable. I guess we all love incentives. And then give them some. Let them know what's in it for them. And they will love you for it. Okay, good. Cool. I, I like that. And tell me, are there any... Uh, methods such as time blocking or time boxing and I don't know the Pomodoro technique or whatever it is that you have tried that you personally like or use within your company I did try the Pomodoro technique um, it sometimes works surprisingly well and other times just doesn't work at all it's a uh, this thing that when when you start a task I sometimes get into this zone, you know, and you just want to get it done. You're hammering away on your keyboard or something and the ideas just flow out of your brain. And if then I have an alarm clock disturbing me, I'm like, ah, smash that phone on the wall or something because that flow is, is hard to achieve. So um, I think it helps with the maybe less exciting tasks, maybe something like emails, for example, you know, which nobody really likes. Um, you do a technique like that, and then you also remind yourself to take a break, go outside, breathe some fresh air, stare into the blue sky, whatever it is. And then there are other tasks where you get to your flow for a designer. It might be designing this great new artwork, or for a writer, it's getting a text done, or whatever it is for you, where you want to get into that flow. And for that, uh, the only thing that has helped me is get started. And then once you get started, you understand it's the one thing that excites you and you just continue doing it anyway because you love it so much. The most difficult part is to overcome this writer's block sort of thing when you sit in front of the white sheet. So I just started to write some nonsense, anything to the topic related that comes out of my head, I write down. And that way I get going. And if the next day I find that the first few sentences were gibberish, I can still go and delete them or rewrite them if I want. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. I completely understand that. I usually don't start off writing on a computer. I always have a notebook. I always have a notebook and a right. pencil. That's yes, clever. still. And I usually just start, and I don't even write a full sentence. I just start writing on a paper, <laughs> and then I, like, as I'm thinking about it, I realize, okay, so it's going. The, the, the juices are there, and then I start typing, and it's uh, something I found that works for me, but I completely understand, like, why you have problems with the Pomodoro technique and it's, it's the same it's the same for me like because when you you get into the zone you get into the zone and it's something <laughs> that breaks that zone like that's it like I'm breaking everything like breaking the phone alarm lock everything it's because <laughs> it's not like even though I do enjoy it I do love it it's not that it's not every day that you can get yourself in such flow that you can get sometimes yeah. and imagine having an alarm clock or anything disturbing it. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. I totally understand. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Do you, have, do you have any other maybe tips uh, that you haven't mentioned initially regarding the productivity either for individuals or for managers for the end of the interview? Oh, there's, there's a huge ton I would love to share. Um, <laughs> I'm a native German, you know, we basically get productivity bred into us with mother's milk. 
Uh, well, that's the stereotype anyway. <laughs> um, what, what I always found very good is um, eating healthy. I can't get myself to eat healthy every day because sometimes junk food is just way too tempting. But uh, today, for example, I had salad and soup for lunch and you just feel great. You know, even in the afternoon, you can get stuff done, which often is not the case. When you had like this fatty, greasy meal, you just sit there and waiting for the time to pass and you might as well just go to bed and sleep. So um, that helps. And one super important thing that saves me a huge ton of time is that I stop following the news. So uh, I'm not reading newspaper. Um, I'm not watching news on TV or something. If I need information, I can Google it. I can Google exactly the information I need, but I don't need to sit in front of TV and, and watch the stuff that they present to me because it's unfortunately often rather negative and it's yeah. often rather sensationalist because that's what drives higher audience numbers. And that puts you into this state of fear and you think everything in the world is bad. Well, it isn't. Our world is amazing. It's, it's great fun and apparently we're in a better state than ever before. We have lower unemployment rates worldwide. We have lower um, unalphabetical rates worldwide than we had ever before. So I think we're doing okay. And um, also after the crisis, I think um, yeah, things will, it will take a while to recover, of course, but uh, overall our world is beautiful and we shouldn't let any news anchor tell us otherwise. I like that. I lo love that. I think it's right now it's also very important because the news right now aren't really anybody's friend, I would say, at the beginning of Wall Street, <laughs> I was following the news because I was trying to get information on the, when are the close downs, when can I get out of the house because of the quarantine and everything. And after like three or four days, I realized that that was draining so much of my energy. And like yes. right now, I'm either like sometimes after work in the evening, I would either like, as you said, like Google it, go to a news outlet that I trust to their website, check the news, see what they're saying. If we're, can we go outside or not? Or if somebody, one of my friends will text me eventually to tell me, Hey, look, like we cannot go out during the weekend. And like, that's it. I don't need to sit through an hour and a half conference to know all that. So. <laughs> exactly yeah i guess you get the most important information by talking with friends or as you say by by researching specifically so just that can save you easily an hour or two every day and if mm. you multiply that by the days in your life then whew, that's a lot of time <laughs> better yeah. spending elsewhere it's easy like, to get swamped into the news website especially when you get on it and you see what one title and you see another title and it's just like <laughs> Go jumping from news to news. That, yeah. <laughs> At some point, you're reading whatever about how to do a DIY project in your house. You're never gonna do when like, what just happened? <laughs> you spend two hours like not doing anything that, that's actually good or productive for you. So I really exactly, like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's that's the one thing we can probably learn from news sites because they are masters at keeping you on their site, you know, and giving you these clickbait uh, articles that you then continue to read for whatever reason. So um, if you're in content marketing, then sure, check the news pages, but just to learn, you know, not to waste your time. Yeah, that, that definitely, definitely made sense. Any other tips or? Uh, whew, I guess we've covered a good lot, yeah. It's, um, yeah. Uh, it's, there's always more, I guess, you know, like, like things I'm, I don't know, Dress properly, for example. I always <laughs> work in a uniform, even from home. Like when I started working from home three years ago, I loved to sit in my sweatpants on the couch until I realized you don't really get anything done. And mm -hmm. um, I designed a uniform for myself, which I wear every day now, even in home office. And it A, doesn't, like it, it saves me the energy of deciding in the morning what should I wear because it's a work day, so you work your wear your uniform. And B, it just makes you feel worky <laughs> sort of thing <laughs> and um, then you also do work yeah and then at 6 p.m i can strip that uniform off and still put on my sweatpants and then chill on the couch if i want yeah okay i i get, I get that I get everything everything <laughs> is, uh, i completely get everything it's, it's perfect i love it thank you so much once again for for taking the time to participate in this interview it was lovely talking to you uh, we got to cover a lot of a lot of tips. I think a lot of people will be able to implement. So that's that's pretty cool. And yeah, that would be that would be all for the today's episode of Workforce Productivity Talks. And we'll speak soon.
Perfect. Thank you, Boyana. The pleasure being on was all mine. Keep up the great work and um, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.